few or more punches in now. This is another homemade tape recorded in uh, <coughs> Melbourne, Australia on the 4th of October 1989 and this is the second tape being done. It's 10.47 p.m. here the little shanty by the railroad track. Hi, God bless you. Uh, I'm Brother Paul Hall. I'd like to got a few flat wheelers on that train. This guy's never going to have to learn how to park their rolling stock. <laughs> Anyway, I'm Brother Paul Hall, and uh, today I'm going to preach. I've just gotten done preaching a sermon from the Gospel according to St. Mark, so let's go to the Gospel according to St. Luke. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Okay. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Amen, Lord. In Jesus' precious holy name. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen, Lord. In Jesus' precious holy name. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Just really pray for the victory, Lord Jesus, and for your guidance here. In Jesus' name, just really pray that you quicken us with thy word, Lord Jesus, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. All power is given to you in heaven and in earth. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Just really pray for the edification of all, all brothers and sisters who will be listening to this tape. For the salvation of those who aren't yet saved. This may help to iron out a few questions that they may have been having over the uh, years. Thank you, Lord. <clears throat> Thank you, Lord. He's doing these tapes is a manifestation of my faith that I believe that you're going to do something here, Lord Jesus. That we have something more fascinating and interesting than anything that exists on the face of the earth. The wonderful gifts which you have given to us. So, in Jesus' name, Lord, I just really seek you, Lord, in Jesus' precious holy name. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Right now, I have a vision of a of a, a large bush, burning bush that is not consumed. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, Lord. All we have to do is call and you will answer. Thank you, Lord. We know that your answer comes even before we ask, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. For it is the Father that worketh through you, Lord Jesus, even as you explained to us in the Scriptures. So, amen, Lord. <coughs> in Jesus' name, <coughs> let's really pray that you anoint me to really preach the word here tonight. Really quicken us. With thy word, open our eyes, help us to have that eye set that we may be able to see, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Really cleanse away our sins. I plead the blood of Jesus over all of us. Lord Jesus, thank you, Lord. You died for our sins. We will not be condemned. Your precious blood cleanses away all sin. In Jesus' name, really fill me with the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. Fill the area with thy Holy Spirit. 
thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name, that we may be able to really be able to see something here tonight. Really uh, anoint and fill the areas around the, the people who are listening with the Holy Spirit. Just fill that area with the Holy Spirit, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord, that they can begin to get some really good answers here from thy word tonight. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen, Lord. He said, Whatsoever you ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. It is written and promised, Call unto me, and I will answer thee, and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. Promises of God are yea and amen to them who believe. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. It's very important to uh, be in the Spirit. Sometimes we don't realize the significance and importance of this. This is our health. This is our security and our comfort. Maybe you don't realize <coughs> uh, there are various places where there are not such good spiritual conditions. And we have to stay inspired and stay in the Lord. Where uh, iniquity does abound, there grace does much more abound. I was just, uh, I went out to a supermarket up there in the, um, in the downtown area of this suburb. And walking through there, it was a very, very depressing sort of spirit around. Now, the, the biblical word is spirit. We know these are various types of um, energy forms. This is particularly bad when I lost a coin under a uh, <coughs> under a uh, ah, but then I'm not going to get into that now. Hallelujah. If you don't understand yet, you'll get the point. Just hang on, keep at it, and you'll get the picture. You'll know what it means to be in the Spirit. You'll know how important it is to seek the Lord and have the Holy Spirit in your area, around you. Hallelujah. So, uh, you'll get there. Just hang on. Most of you know what I'm talking about. Those who don't, just hang in there. You'll get the picture sooner or later. It's important not to have a stunted spiritual growth. You don't want to be a spiritual imbecile, spiritually handicapped, <clears throat> never growing. For God's sake and for your sake, grow in the Lord. Look, if you don't do anything about it, you're not going to grow. <coughs> I can repeat that till I'm, well, I've got all these expressions like repeating something till I'm blue in the face. The whole point is, I can't repeat that too often or too much. It's important to do, be doers of the word. Hallelujah. Doing. That's how you're going to grow. Hallelujah. You'll gladden my heart and you'll be a big blessing to the whole work. Well, I may not know you. I may not know who you are. I may never see you until we meet in heaven. But if a little hint I drop somewhere may help you in your decision between having a crown and having no crown over there, then we both will rejoice. When I see you in heaven with your crown, praise God. <clears throat> OK. 
Okay, <clears throat> St. Luke, the Gospel of St. Luke, according to St. Luke, chapter 14. And it came to pass, as he went into the house of one of the chief Pharisees to eat bread on the Sabbath day, that they washed him. Oh, this is really good. <coughs> Hallelujah. <coughs> And behold, there was a certain man before him which had the dropsy. <coughs> and Jesus answering spake unto the lawyers and Pharisees, saying, Is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath day? And they held their peace. And he took him and healed him and let him go. And answering them, and answered them, saying, which of you shall have an ass or an ox fallen into a pit and will not straightway pull him out on the Sabbath day? <coughs> and they could not answer him again on these things. And he put forth a parable to those which were bidden when, they mar when he marked how they chose out the chief room. Hallelujah. Here's the Son of God. God Himself, through His Son, lecturing those people. They couldn't do a thing to stop them. They couldn't stop them. Here He is. He walks right in right into the house of one of the chief Pharisees to eat bread on the Sabbath day. <coughs> In plain view of all. I mean, Jesus goes in there and he goes in loaded for bear. He really means business. He's going to let these guys have it. He's going to tell them off and tell them good. God is going to do certain things because that is what he said he'd do. <clears throat> he said that through his prophets written in the scriptures. But man has a problem. Man misinterprets God's silence in many cases. <clears throat> and they think they think that God is such an one as them, that he is consenting to them. God is not silent, but he speaks in a still, small voice. As we know from uh, the Old Testament, Elijah heard a still, small voice, and then he went out of the cave. God knows how to deal with man. He's not going to scream. When Jesus walked in there, everybody had their eyes on him. He had their undivided attention. <clears throat> the first thing he does is teach them something very important. about the Sabbath day. Hallelujah. The Son of Man is Lord also of the Sabbath. That's the trouble with making a religious tradition out of something like that. They 
needed to remember the Sabbath and keep it holy. Then I preached the whole sermon on that before, so we're going to go uh, a little further past there. Thank you, Lord. <clears throat> Very interesting pattern on these evening sermons. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. <clears throat> Is God doing something exceptional? I think you'll find out that God is always doing exceptional things. A lot of men don't like that and a lot of angels don't like that. Does it surprise you that the Son of God, Jesus Christ, was an exceptional man and unpopular? Does that disappoint you that you're Messiah? was, and still is, extremely unpopular. A lot of people are hoping just what John the Baptist was wondering. when he sent his men to him and asked him, Are you the one who is to come, or should we expect another? You mean that's it, God? That's what they're saying. You mean that's it? Where are the spectacles, the fireworks? Where was the uh, uh, great conqueror? That's not what uh, man wanted at all. The Messiah they got, the true Messiah, was anointed. The Anointed One. The Spirit of God was upon Him. Hallelujah. God gave Him not the Holy Spirit in measure. And they didn't like that because God was doing a greater miracle. God is not concerned with the haughty or high-minded. He doesn't like that. He prefers the humble and the contrite. Should any wonder that Jesus was like that? The humble carpenter from Galilee? Hallelujah. They could not answer him again on to these things. All right? It's completely silent there. He has their undivided attention. And he put forth a parable to those which were bidden, when he marked how they chose out the chief rooms, saying unto them, when thou art bidden of any man to a wedding, sit not down in the highest room, lest a more honorable man than thou be bidden of him. And he that bade thee come and say to thee, Give this man place, and thou begin with shame to take the lowest room. But when thou art bidden, go and sit down in the lowest room, 
that when he that bade thee cometh, he may say unto thee, Friend, go up higher. Then shalt thou have worship in the presence of them that sit at meat with thee. For whosoever exalteth himself shall be abased, and he that humbleth himself shall be exalted. God can't use those high-minded, high and mighty, holier-than-thou people. I think they're so good that they don't want to go out and soil themselves with the unsaved. But rather they say to them, Come not thou nigh unto us, for we are holier than thou. The physician is sent to the sick. Isn't that a humbling thing to do? You've got to watch out for this holier-than-thou religious attitude. It is totally useless to God. Jesus said to them, You, by your traditions, have brought the counsel of God to none effect. Well, let's face it. What good has religion done to the world today? Where has it gotten the world? The world today, in spite of all its religions and all its holy people, is in the worst mess it could ever possibly be in. Come on, people, you've got the Bible here, right? Is the Word of God the answer to the world's problems? Let's hear it. Who agrees with me? Then you say, Amen. We've got the answer. All right, if we've had the answer for this long... Why don't we take it to them? You're waiting for one missionary in a million to go out there? Are you waiting until you become some sort of David Livingston before you will go out anywhere? You've got the answer. They need it, and you've got it. Now I can read some of your thoughts. I've heard it before. All right, I will do this. I'll go off to Bible school. God is your Bible school, and that world out there, <clears throat> which he has created, is in a mess right now, and he needs you to go out there and do something right now. <laughs> yeah, but you're, you're not ready for that, are you? You want to take the highest seat. You don't want to stoop so low as to soil your hands with someone who may need you out there. You don't want to be a physician sent to the sick. So you get holier and holier to, talk, to try to justify yourself. Well, I've got news for you that none of us down here are very holy. The only righteousness we have is Jesus. He is our righteousness. Verse 12. Then said he also to him that bade him, When thou makest a dinner or a supper, call not thy friends, nor thy brethren, neither thy kinsmen, nor thy rich neighbors, 
lest they also bid thee again and make a recompense, and a recompense be made thee. But when thou makest a feast, call the poor, the maimed, the lame, the blind, and thou shalt be blessed, for they cannot recompense thee, for thou shalt be recompensed at the resurrection of the just. talking about a business lunch in here where you're going to get, uh, you're going to pull off some business deal. So you want to invite people off to your lunch so you can sit around a meal and talk to God. got five yoke of oxen. And God calls you. Drop it, man! Forget the oxen, man! Leave them in the street! What's the matter with these guys? Well, I'll tell you what the problem is. There are, what we used to have a word for it in the old days. call it stone or drugs. I used to stay away from that, but it was a big 
big word going around. And since I was in art school, people always used to talk about it. They used to think they were so cool, so nifty, so in, the in crowd. It was the in thing to do, to be stoned. I'll tell you what the people of this world are on right now. They are on, they are stoned on worldliness. It's like a drug. And they are completely inebriated to where they don't have a level head anymore. The guy's married his wife. He has married a wife, huh? He's on his honeymoon. Oh. Tough luck, honey. I just got invited by God. I'm sorry, man. All right, you can come too, but we're going to the wedding. Come on. No. I pray thee have me excused. That's the big line. That is the line that is heard from here to Timbuktu and back again because it's very common in the world. People are turning down God. Does God like it? Jesus' own words here. The master of the house was angry. God is angry. God is angry at these guys who have taken such a high position, a high seat, a high place. They're so holy, and then when they get bitten, they say, I pray thee have me excused. What kind of an attitude is that? I'm too busy with my nine to five job. I pray thee, have me excused. I'm going out to a convention. I pray thee, have me excused. I'm going shopping today. I have to get these things. I pray thee, have me excused. You can interpolate that into everybody's everyday existence. Not now, Lord. That's what they're saying. Can you imagine that God's calling Noah to build an ark? Can you imagine Noah saying to him, Not now, Lord. I'm, I'm busy doing some more important things than, than this. You know, than, than uh, uh, whatever you want to show me. Or God saying to Abraham, get up and, and take off. Imagine Abraham saying that he was too busy. All throughout the Bible, you'll find the success stories in there were people who obeyed. Maybe they had a little trouble at first, but eventually they did get the victory. Like Jonah, he tried to squirm out of it. <clears throat> Gideon put out so many fleeces before he was going to do something. got around to it. What did these people do? Did they say, look, uh, okay, uh, I, have to, I have to really seek the Lord here. God, give me the victory. Uh, okay, wow, what am I doing? I need to get going. I need to get to the feast. Jesus is saying something here. 
Hallelujah. Verse 25. And there went great multitudes with him. Great multitudes went with him. And he turned and said unto them, If any man come to me and hate not his father and mother and wife and children and brethren and sisters, yea, and his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. And whosoever doth not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. For which of you, intending to build a tower, sitteth not down first, and counteth the cost, whether he have sufficient to finish it. Lest haply, after he hath laid the foundation, is not able to finish it. And is not able to finish it. And all that behold it begin to mock him, saying, This man began to build and was not able to finish. Okay. You want to uh, lay the foundation, you want to start to build this building, this tower. You've got to count the cost first. Have we heard this message before? This is a big part of the gospel. This is a big part of being free. The freedom of the gospel being set free, it involves something on your part. Maybe that's why so many people didn't want Jesus to be their Messiah. Because he demanded a commitment from his disciples. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. A lot of people will disagree with me. They won't like it. They're not going to like this. But Jesus is more important than your spouse. Jesus is more important than your parents. Jesus is more important than your children. Jesus is more important than any relative. Jesus is more important than yourself and your own life. I can tell you that. I know it. You don't have to uh, be my friend because I tell you the truth. As the scripture says, am I become your enemy because I tell you the truth? Jesus is more important. Let's count the cost here, brothers and sisters. Jesus has to be the one who controls and guides you. Jesus has to be the Messiah. He has to be your influence.
count the cost. We'll start the foundation, you won't be able to finish it. If your parents are your influence, more than Jesus. If your spouse is your influence, more than Jesus. If your children influence you more than Jesus. Now that's pretty heavy. Even your brothers and sisters cannot be your influence. Jesus is your influence. That's the gospel. That is the message preached right here and now in the Gospel according to St. Luke. Take the lowest seat. Jesus is the influence, not the self. Not even your own life. And if you're able to do that, then you'll save your life. People won't like that, they'll disagree with me. But what we're looking at down here is the worst, most intense battle, the war of the world. An incredible battle going on in this world. And the enemy is going to send his patrols, his Hordes around, and they are going to comb through everything that pertains to you, your spouse, your parents, your children, your relatives, your friends, or even your own mind, your own life. Because it's so critical to the success of the enemy's operation to stop you and anybody else. That you, you have to count the cost before you get started in this. You want to build on the rock, Christ Jesus. You want to dig down and get to the rock. Okay, you're going to start the foundation. So what? Big deal if you make the right step, it's one step in the right direction. You just passed the entrance exam. You're in the academy. Big deal. Now you've got to finish. You have to make up your mind right now. A lot of you have made up your mind a long time ago. Praise God. God bless you that everything else would be totally subordinate. Jesus comes first. That's when it really begins to mean something. You say, oh, well, uh, <laughs> that's ridiculous. Huh? Yeah, okay, well then you're <laughs> not the cause. you'll be faced with a very unpleasant thing when the enemy tries to stop you and uses one of these elements. You will see a rip, snorting, flop, a terrible loss. Because if you allow any of those things to influence you against the counsel of the Lord and against the word. In this terrible battle down here, that it's going to be a mockery as it has been throughout most of the history of Christianity. 
Because people have gotten this holier-than-thou attitude, and that is put on to excuse themselves from counting the cost. And they have the form of godliness denying the power thereof. It's the same familiar phrase. How afraid do you have me excused? God, on the contrary, will not excuse it when getting mad. That's the gospel. Hallelujah. That's the gospel truth. Count the cost. Count the cost and then go ahead. Total commitment. That's not fanatical. That's realistic because you're in the face of a tremendous battle. And you're going to have to fight a good fight. A good fight of faith. Battling not against flesh and blood, against principalities, spiritual wickedness in high places. Yeah. Count the cost, brothers and sisters. The devil fights dirty. He's going to wipe the, the whole building and then stop you unless you really hold commitment. Let Jesus, allow Jesus to be the one. In